Hey guys, this episode we're going to be talking about JS bundling Rails and how to use ES Build to bundle your JavaScript ultra fast in Rails now. So JS bundling is kind of an interesting middle ground between the asset pipeline, which can't really do a lot of modern JavaScript, and Webpacker, which is kind of a Ruby wrapper around Webpack that obscures the JavaScript config for you. But it's always change. Webpack is always changing, so then Webpacker is also always changing. And I found that hard to keep up with, and things have broken several times, and it's been kind of complicated. And I always wish there was a middle ground between the two, and JS bundling is exactly that. What this does is basically sets scripts in your package JSON, and Rails just says, hey, run whatever tool you need, just output the files to the asset pipeline's builds directory, and then Rails will serve them up using the asset pipeline just like they always have. So we're gonna use kind of the best of both worlds where we get to use our modern JavaScript tooling, but we can also use the asset pipeline um, to integrate that cleanly with very little changes. In fact, the JS bundling Rails library is actually super simple. There is a rake task that enhances the assets precompile to run that build command I mentioned before. And the rest of this is just templates for ES build ro uh, rollup or webpack to help you get started and set up. So this works with Rails 6.0 and up. Um, if you are on Rails 7, like I am here, you can actually say um, JES build to specify the JS bundling library that you would want. Um, and then you can also do the CSS bundling and say we want to use Bootstrap. So let's go create this application. And while that is running, I want to show you ES build, um, which is actually an extremely, extremely fast bundler for JavaScript. It's that fast because it doesn't support a lot of complex features um, like chunking that can make your build tool slower and uh, a lot more complex. So ES build intentionally is lightweight and very fast and sticks to those uh, you know, rules as they add and decide on new features. So ES build is what the Phoenix framework is actually using by default, which uh, I think is a really great option for Rails as well. So we're gonna dive into this and how to set it up. It's a little bit different than Webpacker because it's more minimal. And uh, we're also gonna talk about a library I made called ES build Rails to help make things a little bit easier to import in ES build for your Rails apps. So let's take a look at our brand new Rails application with JS bundling set up. The first thing that I wanna point out is where the command is running from the JS bundling uh, build command. Basically, the script section of your package JSON is going to have a build um, script that you can define however you like. It's got a default here that runs ES build, compiles any of the files in app JavaScript, it bundles them um, and outputs them to app assets builds. Same thing goes for the build CSS. You can use SAS, you can use post CSS, you can use Tailwind. It doesn't really matter what these commands do or run. It just needs to run something and output the files to the app assets builds folder. So under app assets, the config is now changed to include the builds folder and everything inside of it with the link tree here. And that is where those files will be dumped out. And basically we don't save those to Git. We let the commands compile there and send those over. So then our style sheets and our JavaScript files um, inside of the app assets directory are just used for source code. So they're not actually compiled by the asset pipeline or anything and they're basically ignored by the asset pipeline. So this is something that might feel a little bit weird, but that's exactly how it needs to be set up so you don't end up with two application JSs or two application.css's. So under app JavaScript, we now have application JS. This is where um, our JavaScript file is defined. We can add more to that, um, and we can add other files at the top level. We don't put it under packs or entry points or anything like that. It's just at the top of app JavaScript. And then when we do an import for our files, we have to use relative paths here. Um, so we need to say dot slash at the beginning or dot dot slash to go upper directory. Um, and that's how it kind of depends or tells the difference between 
local files and node modules when it's trying to import. So um, here in our controllers, it's going to import index.js, which is then going to import application.js. And then finally, it's going to register our controllers one by one. Now, one of the frustrating parts about ES Build is that out of the box, you have to register each one of these stimulus controllers manually, which gets to be very tiring because uh, you have to write a line or two lines in here for every single controller you define. It's not like Webpacker where you can just import an entire directory um, by using require context. There's not really a function like that in ES Build. So Rails now comes with this bin Rails stimulus manifest update um, that will rewrite this file for you automatically to include the new um, controllers using Ruby. Um, but that is also not my favorite solution because it's easy to forget to run that command and then you don't have your new controllers. So what I have written is this yes build Rails plugin, which uses the glob functionality in Node. Um, to actually allow you to import a directory and all of its nested children. You can also use this for importing all of your controllers from your stimulus controllers directory and then register them one by one automatically. So this is a nice improvement over that so that we can kind of have that same require context functionality that we did in uh, Webpack. So this gives you a nice, uh, you know, balance between the two. So in order to use this, we're gonna to need to do a few things. We're gonna to need to go into our app and we're gonna run yarn add ES build rails. And that's going to add this package. And then we can add a file called ES build config.js. And we'll paste in this config, which basically is going to take the builds <clears throat> and output them to app assets builds. Um, it's gonna compile the JavaScript from the app assets or app JavaScript folder. And then it will use the ES build rails plugin here to allow us to replace this registration here with our example from the readme. So we can say, uh, we'll just import all of the controllers matching that pattern and then register them with our stimulus application. So that's gonna be a great improvement here for our JavaScript, and we can uh, have all that working. Now, the other thing that I wanna mention is that we have to now run the build commands automatically during development, which means we need to run those separate from the Rails server, because it's not built in like the Webpacker integration was. So we need to run the Rails server, the yarn build, and the yarn build CSS commands, and Rails has now introduced a procfile.dev to your app so that you can run this um, and have those running all at the same time. And it's also introduced a bin dev to use Foreman, um, and you could change this to Overmind or any other tool that you would want. But basically, this is going to use Foreman to start that procfile.dev for you out of the box. So you'll now, instead of running bin Rails server, um, you're going to run bin dev to actually start foreman, or you could, of course, run this foreman command directly if you wanted. Now, if we hop back to our esbuildconfig.js file, um, this is not going to be detected automatically by esbuild, so we actually need to change our script here and say node esbuild.config.js and basically have node run that script for us in order to uh, load ES build and everything so that when we run yarn build in our directory, it will actually execute ES build for us. Now with that executed, our builds directory is now going to include the application.js, which is going to be the bundled version of all of the stuff that ES build um, imported. So everything here is the output of that, it's a big old file with everything that we included. And uh, now the Rails application JS file can be imported in your layouts. So application html.erb is going to have your JavaScript include tag instead of a pack tag because we're not using Webpacker. And um, notably the JS bundling and CSS bundling are gonna defer um, these scripts by default. So if your JavaScript is 
needing to run before your page loads, then remove the defer is true, but this is generally a good option to have. You just might need to update your JavaScript so that it um, works with this. So with that said, there um, really isn't a whole lot that we have to do here. So we can go and say Rails generate controller, we'll call it main, we'll give it an action of index, and we can then go to our routes and then say root main index, and then we can boot our Rails application. So we're gonna run bin dev now in order to uh, basically set all those up and it's gonna output our application CSS and our JavaScript file to the builds directory. And when we go to localhost 3000, um, we're gonna see that we get main index here with uh, bootstrap styling. So it's actually applied bootstrap here. We have all of those utilities and everything from bootstrap and we can use the buttons and all of that. So if we go into the main index.html.erb, we can add a div here with the uh, data controller equals hello. And we'll close this div and the hello controller should be mounted to this and change the text in uh, the div to hello world. So we can run this and we should see that the JavaScript is executed and we're good to go. And then by having that watch command in there, we have the ability to edit our JavaScript it's gonna automatically trigger a recompile, but it's not gonna trigger a reload on the page. That's one of the features you don't get from Webpacker using JS bundling. It's not going to automatically reload the page for you. But if we do refresh our page, the JavaScript's already been recompiled in uh, 0.2 seconds or whatever, and voila, we now have the latest JavaScript. So um, this isn't as full featured as Webpacker was, with the bin dev server and all that, but um, I believe you can pretty much set this up to do something like that if you wanted to. Um, so yeah, this is going to automatically watch. Um, that is a flag that we have here in the ES build config. You can add more things in here to specify the target. So if you wanna have different um, ES versions that you wanna target, maybe for older browsers or something like that, you can define the other options in here. You can define how to treat PNGs if you wanna convert them into data URIs to be embedded in your JavaScript. You can do all kinds of cool things like that as well. Um, so that is kind of the high level JS bundling. The ES build Rails command allows us to import all of our you know, application or action cable channels um, using a simple import like this. If you've got a lot of JavaScript to set up things like bootstrap modals and tooltips and whatever, you can import a directory in your app JavaScript um, and it will go ahead and take care of all that stuff for you. So this is a really nice plugin to use with ES Build in Rails. There's a lot of good docs on this. It's very straightforward to use and it's very, very fast. So if we run in a new terminal, run, yarn build, this is going to run in very, very quick amount of time, especially compared to our Webpacker compiles that, um, at least for me, for some of my apps, it was taking like uh, a minute in production or something. And I've seen people take uh, 10 minutes or more <laughs> to compile their large applications on a deploy. So it's pretty awesome to see how fast this is and uh, how nice it is to use modern JavaScript uh, tooling like ES Build with Rails. So that's kind of it for this episode. There's not a ton to it. It's mostly all handled by the package JSON build script. So you can define whatever command you want in here. Rails is going to take it, run it, and then expect that the output was dumped in the app assets builds folder, and it's gonna go from there. So that's it for this episode. In the next one, we're gonna talk about the build CSS so that we can use CSS bundling with the Tailwind JIT um, using the actual Tailwind CLI officially instead of having to go through Webpacker and all that set up, we can use the official tooling from Tailwind. We can also use Bootstrap here through SAS and you can set up post CSS directly. There's a lot of options for your um, CSS and it really is a great option too for, for that. So that's what we'll be talking about in the next episode and I will talk to you then. Peace.